Entertainment has a weird relationship with space, especially Hollywood. No, a helmet is not enough to survive in space, there is no sound there, fire doesn't burn without oxygen, etc. This is not the topic of the video, though I believe that most people know this and have accepted long ago that we'll seldom get anything that respects these laws. I think whenever something like Leia taking a nap in the middle of literally nothing happens, most of the audience roll their eyes so hard you can hear a few optic nerves snap, but I digress. I'm here to complain about something else that is mentally deficient about sci-fi settings. I admit that the title is a bit of an exaggeration, but titling it the vast majority of sci-fi planets suffer from several problems that seriously deteriorate one's ability to immerse themselves in the setting in question wouldn't roll off the tongue that easily. What I want to discuss in this video are a few points that generally get overlooked. These mostly derive from the fact that humans just take the conditions on Earth as the default and use it as a shortcut so that they do not have to fiddle with world building. Trouble is though that these are supposed to be written and created by people who are allegedly creative, but I guess envisioning their own brand of weirdly colored humanoid alien takes precedence over doing their job well. To help us take everything into account, I've written a handy list entailing major points, which should always be important, but rarely are, and a few auxiliary parameters, which could be ignored for the most part, as they always are, but could make for some interesting planets. So the main factors to consider are atmosphere, gravity and biomes or planetary regions. The less important ones include the day-night cycle, orbit and incoming radiation. Now, I'm no astrologist, so there very well could be a few more, but I'll go with these ones as even such basic aspects are ignored almost always. Well, ignored is perhaps not the right word, it's more like earthified, which is not an actual expression. Alright, time to address each point one by one. Atmosphere. The atmosphere on our planet is rather specific and has changed much over its lifetime. Oxygen producing ancient bacteria actually caused a mass extinction when Earth was still in its infancy. Since we evolved to fit the current conditions, us as Earthlings are not too flexible when it comes to what we breathe. While we can survive on a bit less oxygen, and high concentrations are only problematic if the accompanying pressure makes it so, it is still a rather specific combination. Yet in most sci-fi universes almost every species seems to require an atmosphere very similar to what we have on Earth, and the overwhelming number of inhabited planets provide just that. To be entirely fair, it is not an impossibility. There is an interesting argument to be made that habitable planets go through rather similar processes when life evolves, but ignoring the fact that this is a rather lazy cop-out use so that the writer does not have to think too hard, chances for this are astronomically low. Every random mutation, meteor impact, the elements present on the planet itself and their abundance among many other properties and events all influence the outcome and the end result is never constant. I do not really understand the motivation behind it other than convenience and laziness. It would be a very interesting sci-fi setting where the various sentient races cannot share the same atmosphere and have to work around it, making hub worlds inhabited by most species a real challenge to design. Way more interesting than it's just air lol. Also, if different elements and combinations made up each atmosphere, air pressure would also be a variable. It's rather sad that the only semi-common difference is that some aliens breathe water, and even then they are usually amphibious, so screw diversity I guess. On a note somewhat similar to pressure, there is also the question of gravity. As you very well know, it varies widely across planets, even between those similar to each other, as it is dependent on planetary mass. Even though there are examples where planets do not have the same gravity as Earth, these are the exceptions to the rule. Why is this seldom capitalized on? Even most uninhabited planets seem to miraculously have the same gravitational pull as the others. Once again, the chances for so many planets to share a near identical mess are lower than the chances for the Lord of the Rings series not to be butchered by Jeffy Boy. As it will be the case for most of these points, it is yet again the result of convenience, but writers do seem to be a bit more aware of it. Still, it would grant so many possibilities for an interesting setting. With the additional fact that alien species would evolve to live under different gravity, visiting other home planets might have health risks based on this simple fact, and interspecies communes would need to agree on a standard value which causes the least amount of problems to the least amount of inhabitants. Once again though, it is mostly dumbed down to I can jump high on this planet lol, but even that is giving too much credit to some settings. Moving on to the next point, we come to one that is superficially touched upon in some cases, but is often very simplistic. So we all know the desert planet, snow planet tropes. This is basically the effort most are willing to make to create a fictional planet. Firstly, I have to wonder if they've been outside, and not in a city. 
Our planet offers a dizzying variety of biomes and environments ranging across the globe, encompassing such snowy and sandy versions. While uninhabited planets might seem a lot more homogeneous, the fauna and flora of our world is incredibly diverse, each species adapting to different regions. Even though environmental factors are given, each living being alters them slightly, creating an ever-changing wonder. I cannot emphasize what a disservice it is to a potential setting to just call it jungle planet. Beside the fact that said planet encompassing jungle would be on the shadow of a doubt, show variety, as a myriad factors would influence the soil, moisture, temperature, weather, etc. of each region. It is extremely improbable that the entirety of a world in question could support dense forests. I know we are not good at naming planets, we call ours dirt after all, but naming itself is not the issue. It is the fact that these places usually are fully entombed beneath shrubbery. Homogeneous shrubbery, I might add. I'm fully aware that these are simply set pieces with little thought put into them, but it's detrimental to the art of world building. When designing a planet, especially one which is inhabited, and especially especially one that is the main setting for a story, just spending 30 minutes on a rough map with post-it notes is better than there's sand or lol. Oh, and by the way, an entire planet that is a desert or under perpetual winter conditions, not a good place to set up shop. While there is certainly a possibility that some very resilient species could survive under these conditions, it's not gonna be us, or our alien race skins. Just consider the logistics of setting up colonies on these places without terraforming. Vast expanses of sand or snow with no place to grow crops, no place for herbivores to graze on, and no life forms to produce our precious oxygen. While most of said gas is produced by cyanobacteria rather than plants, those would be hard pressed to live without liquid water. Unless there are vast oceans on the desert planet, there would be little to no life there. However, if there were oceans, there would be precipitation, and there wouldn't be a planet encompassing desert. But, even if there would be oxygen for some miraculous reason, inhabitants would be entirely dependent on off-planet shipments of food, but water at minimum. Let's not forget about inhabited frozen planets either. To their credit, life could very well be a possibility there. With liquid water under massive ice sheets, there would be plenty of opportunity for thriving ecosystems, possibly much like animals in the pitch black at the bottom of our own oceans. Not on the surface though. If there is no thawing, there would be no life there. The thick ice could not be penetrated without heavy equipment, therefore animals could not sustain themselves there. Plus there would be no oxygen either, which is more so a problem for us. Colonies would find themselves in a similar predicament as on a desert planet, but their existence would be feasible in some way. Melting snow to gain water and heating massive habitats with extensive hydroponic forms would be a possibility. But again, with no oxygen and constant freezing temperatures, it would be very costly to keep people alive there without extensive terraforming. Again, to reiterate, I know these are barely more than excuses for particular set pieces, but why is that the norm? Why are we content with scraps when we could have the whole meal? Why is it acceptable to put basically no work into certain aspects of fiction? While we sometimes see very pretty skyscrapers on the big screen, where perhaps even the people inside are interesting and their actions intriguing, more often than not these skyscrapers are built on diuretic dog shit. Nah, that analogy is incorrect. Smelly doggo poo poo would assume some sort of ulterior motive. It's more like sand, bland, formless and over time leads to the collapse of the building if it's not replaced by something better. I might sound a bit melodramatic now, but hey, this is what I do with this series, desperately trying to incite change hoping that one day more thought will be put into the natural aspect of world building. That is not to say that good examples do not exist, one that is rather obvious, especially since it prides itself with having actual scientists, or at least one, I'm not sure about details, designing its planets is interstellar. I'm aware that the movie is not perfect in every way, I've heard some valid criticism, but they did make a realistic solar system, so they deserve props for that. Anyway, I still have a few minor points to make, so let's get on with it. As I've mentioned, these are not really pet peeves of mine, nor would they come up in most stories, but would make any setting more intricate, interesting and realistic. First one's the day-night cycle. In some cases this might be addressed, but even if it deviates from our 24 hours, its effects are seldom explored. Imagine how a much shorter day would affect society. Would the inhabitants of the planet even follow it? Would they go to sleep every night, even if they are only a few hours apart? Or would they sleep only every few days, but even during the day? 
How would it affect animals, especially those only active at a specific time of the day? Would they even exist? On planets with longer days, how detrimental would be the increased time the sun hits the surface and the longer night cooling it? There are many questions and many interesting answers. Sure, this would require quite a lot of work and research, but ain't that the point of creating something? On a note similar to planetary rotation, let's take a look at orbit. Again, copying Earth's example is easy, but it's not even done too often. In fact, I struggle to remember any sci-fi planet with seasons, let alone season that vary due to an axial tilt. But let's take things slowly. Planets are not the exact same distance away from their sun during their orbit. At some points, it is significantly closer or farther away, meaning that sunlight has a somewhat easier or harder time reaching the surface, but this is not the only potential reason behind seasonal variation. You see, planets' rotational axes are seldom perfectly perpendicular with their orbital axes. This means that days are longer on parts of the celestial body during different parts of the year. Similarly to changing the day-night length, changing the orbit opens a Pandora's box, altering everything from the length of a year to average temperatures and varying seasons across the globe. It enables a dizzying amount of changes, although again, efforts needed. Now on to the third minor point, radiation. As you know, the magnetic field surrounding Earth protects us from much of the harmful radiation. However, this might not be the case for some planets. Even though it might spell impending doom for the world in question, a core that cannot produce a strong protective geomagnetic field would incite some interesting changes, as would the Sun with stronger solar wind. Either way, if solar flares manage to better penetrate this protection, life would have to adapt. It would be like living in a huge microwave oven that occasionally turns on. Creatures would have to either hide or biologically protect themselves each time the sun breaks wind. It would definitely produce some interesting animals or plants. That being said, the solar wind would start chipping away at the planet's atmosphere, so unless it is constantly replenished in some way, that world is going the way of Mars. Again, just another factor to consider. Anyway, that's all I got for you today. The first three? Serious pet peeves of mine. Really dislike that this is the standard we are used to. The latter three? Just ideas, I guess. I hope I wasn't too meandering with them. I really appreciate it if you watch this long. Might even throw me a sub or like. I also have Twitter. I put meaningless crap on there. Plus my videos. Alright, I'm gonna go now. Bye!